Shepard takes a running jump into the following beam of light energy stuff. And notice the angle they're falling at, a 45. This means the beam will have to disintegrate Shepard in a matter of seconds, or they'll exit the beam on the other side and keep falling. Considering they're part metal, disintegration might take some time. Why didn't the Catalyst just provide a platform to allow someone to get synthesized, like in Control? Why put their faith in a crippled moron that magically isn't crippled anymore, who took a running start and is about to fall out of the beam? Why? Because they're stupid. The level designer had problems building platforms out of thin air and magically moving them. Why is there even a continuous waterfall-like beam anyway that defies gravity? Maybe the falling symbolizes how messed up physics are? Or how off the deep end the narrative is gone? Now it looks like there's a secondary beam, like a membrane of clear jello covering up the first, which expands and then causes a green explosion in both beams. We still don't know how Hackett knows the Crucible is armed, why anyone on the Normandy would abandon Shepard, why there's a rendezvous point, or why the Crucible doing whatever would even matter, since the Normandy is seen flying through the large green ball of energy from the Crucible anyway, and nothing happened. That's because it's stupid. So everyone gets hit by the explosion on Earth like the Reapers, and they fly off. Why? What exactly did we just do to cyborg gods? Did we give them the full understanding of organics? Didn't they already have that? Do they even have DNA to change? Why did the Catalyst order them to fly away? And why couldn't he have done this before, especially since Synthesis Reapers shouldn't be any different from normal Reapers? I'm not really following anything here, but then again, it's stupid. Then there's the infamous green husk scene. Let's call him Jack. Did we just give Jack the full understanding of organics? Is he now able to kill them more efficiently? Does he want to? Did we give him consciousness as well? Knowing what he knows about humanity's social condition, its sensibilities, its faults and failings, languages, pains and pleasures, Shakespeare, death metal, gangster rap, and then awakened to himself, who is a decrepit, murdering abomination of those things he now understands, is he going to commit suicide? Is he going to hate the Reapers, knowing that they killed him and turned him into such an abomination, now that he realizes what he has lost? Do they even think and feel? Do all Reaper ground forces who are abominations have this knowledge and realization as well? Seems Jack is having a problem standing up. Are you ready to slit your wrists now, Jack, now that you're cognizant that your existence is a shambling, walking nightmare of murderous, mindless slavery? Do you even have blood? I sure hope Jack didn't comprehend a hundred years worth of Russian literature instantly, because that would only result in suicide. You may think Bioware is just trolling us, but nope, it's stupid. Then Bob the Marine that has that look, you know, that the look the rest of us all have, which we still have when we watch this thing, when we're no longer trying to comprehend whatever the hell is going on, but what Hudson and Walters feel like when they wake up every morning and you realize, hey, these guys have brains and that this DLC is somehow an answer to solving a handful of problems the fans had. The other question is, did we just rape the entire galaxy's minds and bodies just because some insane AI thought it felt it could solve a non-existent problem no one gets? Because the writers were in over their heads, unable to comprehend their own fiction, and completely disregard their own lore, plot, characters, physics, genetics, computer science, relativity, gravity, thermodynamics, explosions, ex electromagnetism, Oh, look, the Turians and Reapers are green, and have glowing green eyes. Why? That's not creepy at all. Turning everyone's corneas into phospholuminescent green flashlights was totally part of the deal of altering their DNA, and making Reaper destroyers glow green, even though they just received a download of the understanding of all organics, which they already had. Yeah, I'm so glad everything's green now. That makes much more sense. Good call there, designers. I can totally see what you guys were doing here. It's like I can feel your rape fantasy from some tree-hugging hippie who rambles on about some organic gene manipulation and global free downloads for data of everyone and how they wish their government were cyborg gods who already have the... I, yeah, you know, I have no goddamn clue what's going on. Oh, the Krogans too. Well, there goes the ability to appreciate Rex's sparkling red eyes. Uh-oh, looks like you'll have to make a DLC to accommodate that fan base of sexually dysfunctional perverts. Oh, right. Oh, wait, and the Krogan's armor is shimmering green. I thought organics just got their DNA altered to accommodate synthetic components somehow. Now their clothing got changed. Okay, did the Catalyst lie to us? Why are inanimate objects glowing green? 
Oh wait, it's just stupid. Joker's piloting the Normandy trying to escape the green explosion, which is strange since the Normandy already touched the green ball explosion at the Citadel. I don't know, maybe they didn't completely touch it. Regardless, Joker on the Normandy isn't glowing green. And so plant life has had its DNA changed too. Okay, why? Why exactly did we give plants synthetic components? How is plant life affecting the war between organics and synthetics? Did non-sentient life forms get a special kind of DNA change? Do carbon dioxide fixating plants now fixate, I don't know, nitrogen? Would they make nitrogen-based leaves? And why is a green plant glowing green? I thought plants absorbed specific frequencies of light. And how would they be able to absorb and then emit green light energy when green plants obviously reflect it? So wait, how does that... Oh god, this is stupid! And by stupid, I mean these guys have forgotten the punchline and are just pushing the joke as far as it can go. Here's some basic science. You've got a trillion cells. You've got about 10 trillion cells composed of microorganisms in your body. Link in the description if you want to learn more about that. Interestingly enough, that link also talks about photoluminescence in certain bacteria. So not only are you changing, the organisms in you that help you are also going under a change. That could be the light being emitted from those people's eyes. So, photoluminescence. For some reason, your eyes, which absorb light, which does make sense, alters the bandwidth of it through some unknown medium and then re-emit it, which is going to be very darn confusing when suddenly you're not only seeing the world in green, it's now bright green. You have no choice in the matter. You have frickin' green flashlight eyes. Aside from all the bacteria in your bodies possibly gaining photoluminescent properties, we do know reapers use nanites, so we could guess that's the medium they're using in causing the light. The question is, how the hell did our DNA manufacture these nanites instantly when our DNA has barely begun to change? It's unbelievable crap on top of more completely unbelievable crap. There's no way nanites traveled through a massless explosion, but it is believable that explosion carried the data for them to be manufactured. Keep in mind these explosions had to either reprogram every cell in the body near instantly or in stages. The beam, in order to be believable, must work on some subatomic level or even further, and somehow identify organic material and then DNA and then start changing it, and possibly other forms of life which another form of replication is based on, and not sugars and phosphates, which says nothing of it detecting a running software program, let alone hundreds of them working in unison, figuring out it's a sophisticated enough to be considered intelligent, whatever that means, and then somehow give it the complete encyclopedia of all living things ever. And now I need a drink. Joker, who for some reason crashed on the planet, even though we saw the Normandy wasn't damaged, just, you know, felt like it. Because that's how mass relays work. They connect to sister relays and they just eject you directly onto planets. No, wait, that's wrong. His arms are now glowing green. So forget your corneas that can actually store light, now your skin glows green. Okay, I need another drink. So, Edie and Joker are hugging, and do they know what happened? Joker is limping, so no great and immediate changes to his DNA have occurred yet. And when a number of cells in their DNA or nucleus have been compromised and changed, the body tends to go into an immune response. Could you imagine the, immu the immune response of every single cell in your body including your white blood cells, occurring simultaneously. There's something fishy going on here, isn't there? All right, it's stupid. And then we have a really microscopic view of what appears to be a DNA molecule. And then this crap on top of it. Let's see, we went from impossible views of the galaxy to impossible views of the cell. What's next, Casey? Subatomic particles? You want to make highly inaccurate animated models of the secrets of resurrection? Oh. Uh, yeah. Let's see what Jim Watson and Thomas Crick have to say in a scene from Life Story, The Race for the Double Helix. He left the hydrogens on. Why would he do that? Hmm. He's trying to hydrogen bond the phosphates. Would the phosphates be ionized? Yes, they would. So they'd repel each other? Yes, at neutral pH, they would. This thing could never hold together. Oh, no. It'd blow itself apart. He screwed up, hasn't he? Oh yes. If you're going to do visual models of the most famous chemical compound, can you please get it right? 
In this, we're not just talking about the very intricate relationship structure and chemical bonding between phosphates, sugars, purines, and pyrimidines. There's some sort of glowing green structure lining up across the base pair. I don't even see any phosphate backbone anywhere connecting the two sugars. These things are just floating around. For some reason, we can show the glowing green crap, which is smaller. Great. Did the 3D artist forget how to Google? Anyway, this other structure, which appears to be starting as a benzene ring, covers the ridiculously large sugar molecule, which is ribose or deoxyribose, then connects a purine pyrimidine pair and does this per base pair. First off, stupid. While a DNA molecule can be twisted and moved around, but not with this other smaller structure or whatever attached to it. The molecule would pull itself apart, and not the way a DNA molecule would unwind for transcription. The chemical bonds between the phosphate sugars and base pairs would literally break apart through basic electromagnetic forces. In fact, I'm not even sure how this magical green structure would even be able to move, how it would magically be able to start connecting itself in a lattice, starting at the sugar, let alone what it would do. Nanites, which the reapers actually use, cannot be the size of a subatomic particle. I don't care how godlike they are, it's just not physically possible. A nanite may be as small as the size of a cell, but not the size of an organelle and not the size of a sugar molecule. Were any genes actually altered? I thought we were changing the DNA of organics to accommodate for synthetic components, as in manufacturing them, so maybe some form of inorganic synthesis instead of protein synthesis, like, I don't know, using aluminum atoms and not adding some sort of impossible structure on top of the DNA molecule. How the hell is the DNA molecule going to unwind for transcription with this magical other thing on top of it? Is it a scaffolding? What does it do? How does it work? You can't just put fancy crap on the screen and expect us to buy it. Any first-year science student would laugh at you. So, ED says some stuff. They now bring us the collective knowledge of the cultures that came before. And why are we accepting the Reapers? No one likes them. They just blew up home worlds and now it's okay? Oh look, my body has been raped. Far as we know, you're the ones responsible. Hey, giant destroyer Reaper that killed my friends and destroyed the city? Let's rebuild a frickin' coffee shop together. And how the hell is a destroyer Reaper, Reaper building, rebuilding anything? Walking around on streets would put giant holes in the pavement. It can't do any heavy lifting because its four legs aren't designed for that. It's designed to destroy. Stupid. Let's also not forget it's still walking around and indoctrinating everyone. But that's okay because we're probably already mind raped with this green crap in us. As a galaxy, we can now live the lives we have wished for. As a galaxy, we can what now? Is Edie talking for the entire galaxy? Because the lives of individuals that wanted to live didn't involve wanting magical green crap in them or have murdering mind-controlling giants helping us somehow rebuild Starbucks. And by helping us, I don't mean by having them stand around and tell us stories of how to better mix concrete from the dead civilizations they have in them. That sounds like some kind of hellish slavery. No one, and not the entire galaxy, wished for that. Unless we are now officially mind-controlled and indoctrinated, and everyone's just hunky-dory with his nightmare going on. Oh yeah, everyone looks so chic with that green veneer across everything. Can't wait for tomorrow's next top fashion. Well, maybe the Drells do. And more useless and disturbing pictures. And then we have a picture of Kasumi and her boyfriend. Can we make blue holograms now? Is this normal for our Omni tools to change color on us? Is KG solid? Are we seeing her dream? Is this Star Wars? Is she falling free even further into her obsession over her dead boyfriend? Taking our first steps into a new and wonderful future. Okay. Uh, Geth get glowy green lens flares, which has always been not very annoying, of course. But I guess Miss Quarian loves a giant light source in her eyes. Wait, wait a second. They did a 3D model of a Quarian female with her mask off. And many people really, really wanted us to reveal what she looks like under her mask. And on the other hand, you know, with things that are mysterious, um, you don't really want to destroy the mystery. So you can show a nameless quarry in her face, but not a side character. Hmm. Wow. There's reasons to hate this DLC for its graphically animated magical hand-waving bullshit. But now we need reasons to hate you personally 
for what you did to Tally. And why aren't her eyes glowing? You know that normal white light that all Corians seem to have? Why isn't it glowing green? Now like every other sentient species. Did her white light cancel out the green light? Was it due to the gases in her mask? Her face is covered in a hood, and the light source is behind her, so what happened here? And isn't she going to get sick? I would imagine it takes some time for the magical DNA change to fix her immune system, but not instantly. Okay, so Joker still walks with a limp, which is mostly a skeletal problem, but Miss Quarian here has instantly cured her poor immune system. Stupid. Where organics and synthetics can coexist peacefully. They were coexisting peacefully. The only non-peaceful synthetics were the Reapers. With peace across the galaxy and with unlimited access to knowledge. And what? To recover the greatness that was lost. Well, sorry, Mac, that's not a sentence. There's no noun. Peace across a galaxy, and with our powers combined, we shall uncover the greatness that was lost. We know English isn't your strong suit, but come on, this was your makeup exam, and you can't write a sentence. And surpass it. Any civilization would have surpassed any other, maybe save the Leviathans, without the access to the Reaper's knowledge, by virtue of living longer than 50,000 years. It didn't need synthesis for that. We will reclaim our worlds. Who took them? What, did you lose them? And the stars. Whoa, that's like... deep. I'm going to fly my plane now. Stupid. As the line between synthetic and organic disappears. Aside from the fact that organics are... organic. Stupid. We may transcend mortality itself. Okay, Billy, get up there. Get up into that Reaper blending machine. Now, if we have the complete understanding of organics, uh, what's the holdup? Stupid. Yay, now our neurons are green or something. Uh, green, green, just green. To reach a level of existence I cannot even imagine. Oh, Trisha, you're getting me all riled up here. Talk about bullshit inorganic evolution more. And we will remember that this chance for a new life did not come without cost. Aside from losing faith in humanity, the literal death of a franchise, and possibly an entire video game company, yeah, I'm totally okay with Galactic Rape. And why is Javik still alive? Wouldn't he be wanting to kill himself right about now, like he said he would? Or are his green shepherd molecules preventing him from having such thoughts? Oh my god, what's wrong with your face? So then the Normandy flies off because it was never broken in the first place, which is ironic because Mass Effect 3. Steve! I'm alright! You sure? Get safe. 